Hello, friends. Welcome. I'm Heidi with Onigo Stamping, and welcome to my craft corner for the September online card class using the Fond of Autumn stamp set. I'm giving everybody just a few minutes to get in here and get ready to get going. If you are here and uh, watching live with me tonight, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know where you are watching from. If you are watching the replay, I want to say a special welcome to you too. So glad you're watching the replay. And go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know that you uh, that you caught the replay later too. I always like to hear from everyone. So like I said, just giving everyone a few minutes to get here um, before we get started. So because it is just, just eight o'clock right now. <laughs> Oh, I hope y'all have been having a fabulous week. Um, I do want to send out, you know, my thoughts to all of my friends and family and everyone living in Florida and the Carolinas and all along the East, um, the East Coast there. Hopefully you guys have buttoned down the hatches and uh, got done what you need to do to get safe and have all your, your hurricane prep bags and all those kinds of things. Um, you're waiting on the hurricane, Jerry. And oh, wow. I, you, that, I don't miss I don't miss the hurricanes. Although I must say, every time a hurricane was coming quite close, we just evacuated. <laughs> we just left immediately. <laughs> so um, that was kind of the nice thing about working in education. Oh, he closed the school. All right, we're leaving. <laughs> so anyway, thinking of everyone down in Florida and all along the East Coast. So welcome, welcome, welcome tonight. Um, just a couple things before we get started. Oh, hello, Karen. You're in Florida too. See everyone. Everyone is down there in Florida, so I hope y'all stay safe. Um, I do want to remind you that the Perfect Partners uh, promotion ends this week. It ends uh, ends Friday, the end of September, um, and you the so you can buy the dies. Those are the special dies that go. There's like six stamp sets, and they have dies that go with them. And you can get the dies separately, or you can get the dies in the stamp set. But after September, the dyes are no longer going to be available. So if you want them, make sure you're going to be for Friday. This is also the last uh, last week of the September online weekly specials. Um, so those are going to end on Thursday. They're going to be all over. So lots of stuff ending. But there is good stuff coming in October, too. Not in a flood zone, and you get three days off. That is perfect, Jerry Ann. See, that was us. Made me like, we're just going to go on a little vacation during evacuation. evacuation. So all right. Um, I want, I'm going to turn my cameras around. I want to show you guys a couple of, um, <laughs> Stacy, welcome. Sorry, I'm reading comments. I get distracted. I want to turn around my camera and show you, um, a couple of the cards, the handmade cards that I got for my birthday. Many of you guys saw it was my birthday yesterday. I ran a little special and I just, I got a couple cards that I had to show you before we start our class tonight. So here is the first one. This is from my sister and this is amazing. This is so creative. I want you guys to guess which stamp set this is. See if you can guess which stamp set this is, because I think this is so cute and such an imaginative idea. So I'm going to set that aside while you guys are thinking about that. And then I want to show you this, this card that I got from Kimberly. Isn't that so cute? This wasn't a birthday card. She just sent this to me last week, but I kept meaning to bring it upstairs and show it to you, and I kept forgetting, and it opens up, and it's like, look at that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That'd be my crazy fun sister. Yeah, it was Kathy. Carol's card was cute too. I don't have it sitting here, but this one I thought was super creative. Any thoughts on what stamp set that is? Making up these little uh, rockers on the front of this card. <laughs> That's okay. Nobody has to send me birthday cards. I just thought, you know, I'd want to share with you. Hello, Vicki. All right, let me show you what stamp set this is. This is in the mini catalog on page 47 of the mini catalog. And it is the Countless Trees stamp set. Look at that. She took the Countless Trees and she thought that those tree pieces looked like hair. <laughs> so she turned them into party animal rockers. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> I think it's just so cute. Anyway, I had to share that with you because I thought that was just a fabulous idea. If you registered for tonight's card class, you should have all of your supplies. You should have gotten your um, card kit in the mail. They do totally look like rocker hair. So you should have three cards and then you should have another bag with um, a piece of white and the twine and then your rustic, your rustic uh, metallic dots. I forgot to pull those out. So 
And then we're going to use the Fond of Autumn stamp set. You guys, I love this stamp set. I've been using it for tons and tons of stuff lately. Um, we used it for the retreat this weekend, which was awesome. If you uh, missed it, I hope you'll join us in February because we had an amazing time. We had lots of really, really cool stuff. So hello, Jude. Um, so I've just been using the Fond of Autumn all the time, and it is fabulous. I just keep coming up with more ideas for what to do with it. It just seems so versatile. So that's what we're using tonight. Um, you don't have to do any die cutting for this uh, for this class. Everything has been done for you. Um, there may be a little bit of fussy cutting though. So if you have the dies, you can use them. Um, and I do want to show you the dies at some point here. Let me pull those out. I meant to pull them out beforehand. Karen, you said it was a blast. Yeah, this weekend was a blast. It was really fun. So this is the dies that go with it. I want to show you what I really love about these dies. I didn't even use like there's this big detail die and that's really cool. And I didn't use it tonight. But this die right here, it cuts out this big bouquet thing. And what's really, really cool is it actually cuts it into four pieces. So it cuts apart the flowers and the leaves and then these two like leaves and berries down there. So that's what, I, I don't know, it's really cool. I really like it. Um, it's just something different, right? Like you can use that all as one or you can cut it apart into pieces. Let's go ahead and pull out card number one. Card number one, let's look at what is in here. This is probably gonna be the card that takes us the longest tonight. So you should have a little uh, rectangle cut with the stitched rectangle dies. You should have a piece of the uh, Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. You should have a little tiny strip of the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. A bigger piece of the Very Vanilla cut with the stitched rectangle dies. Some so saffron. And then your card base is the Very Vanilla Thick. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start just by gluing a couple things together just because I like to get the pieces out of the way <laughs> before I start stamping. So I'm gonna glue together what I can glue together. So I'm gonna start by adhering this piece of the Gingham Cottage paper to my card, to the piece, not to my card, to the piece of So Saffron. Now, if you registered for this class, you have already gotten all of the, uh, all the tutorials for tonight's class. And those tutorials have all the measurements and everything you need um, if you wanna make these cards again, make another set of them. Um, if you missed registration for this class, you can purchase the tutorial bundle from my website. So you won't get, you won't get the supplies to make the cards, but you do get the tutorials. And then I'm gonna take this little piece, I can pick it up and I'm gonna adhere it in the inside. It's just kind of my little decoration piece. I had some extras and I thought, well, let's cut this, cut this in little strips and we'll just add it to the inside of the card as a little extra, little extra prettiness on the inside. All right, just like that. Super easy, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll set that aside and we'll get to the stamping portion. I just like to get kind of some of the pieces put aside because otherwise they all go for vacation on my on my stamp desk and they kind of run away and can't find them. So, all right. Now in the tutorial, hi Cindy, thank you. Um, in the tutorial, I used the Tuxedo Black Memento ink to stamp these flowers. But I kind of decided afterwards, I want to try stamping this with the early espresso. So you can choose whether you want to stamp it in early espresso or if you want to stamp it in the uh, tuxedo black. And I'm just going to stamp this right on this piece. And it may go off just a little bit and that's okay. Kind of get it lined up. So it's just gonna stamp right on there. This is a good stamp to use with the Stamparatus. I'm not using it with the Stamparatus tonight, um, but just in case, you know, sometimes with big stamps, you don't get a good impression and you have to re-stamp it. So that's what's really nice sometimes if you use the Stamparatus with big stamps like this, um, it allows you to re-stamp it really easily if you have to. All right, so there are 
my flowers. And now we're going to, we're going to color. We're going to do some coloring. We're going to hang out and chit chat and do some coloring. <laughs> I'm starting with my light Calypso coral and I'm going to start. I'm going to use the bullet tip. My brush tip is getting kind of beat up on that one. So we're going to use the bullet tip. I like the brush tips better. I just think they color faster. <laughs> um, but they do tend to get kind of beat up. And once they start getting beat up, it's harder to control um, where they go. So, and also when your markers start to run out, when your stamp and blend start to run out, um, sometimes you can still color with the bullet tip, even when the brush tip won't hardly do anything. So kind of help them make, make them last longer. All right, so I just put down a little bit of the light Calypso Coral and now I'm gonna come in with some of the dark Calypso Coral. And I'm just coloring over those cheater lines. Stampin' Up! is so nice. They put some lines on the flowers here. So that's where we're gonna, that's where we're gonna add some darker color. So just in there. And then I'm gonna come back with the light and I'm just gonna color over that to just blend it out a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the nice thing about the Stampin' Blends is you really, it doesn't have to be perfect. I love things that don't have to be perfect. <laughs> All right, so there's my first flower. I'm just gonna move on to the next flower. You guys can uh, tell me what y'all are up to if you're not busy coloring. I might not be able to read the comments very quickly though because I'm looking at my own coloring. So I'm just gonna sit here and chatter on. So. Oh, doo, doo, doo. now I'm coming back in with the dark Calypso Coral. And again, just going over the lines that are on the flowers to add a little bit darker color. So, so I already, I already talked about the fact that the perfect Partners promotion ends tomorrow, and, or ends Friday, not tomorrow, Friday, end of the month. I can't believe September is almost over. I don't, I'm not really sure where September went to, um, but it's almost over already. <laughs> that is just crazy. This fall is going by fast already. And it's cold and rainy, so it must be fall. Uh, yeah, so that ends and last of the September weekly specials end. We did, we just found out today just today, this morning, um, that there is gonna be a special running in October. Now you guys know that the best deal on Stampin' Up! is always the Stampin' Up! starter kit, right? Um, whether you actually want to um, teach classes and do things, um, make a little bit of extra side money or help pay for your stamps, or whether um, you just wanna get a good discount on your own stuff or a good deal on the starter kit. It's just a fabulous deal, anyway. Normally it is $99 and you get to pick $125 worth of product, anything you want. In October, I think it's like October, starting October 4th, um, you're going to be able to pick $155 worth of product and still just pay $99. So $99, free shipping, and you get to pick $155 worth of Stampin' Up! stuff, whatever you want. Like whatever you want, it doesn't matter. You know, so, which is amazing. It's an awesome deal. So there's like no tricks. There's no, uh, I don't wanna say, there's no catch. <laughs> there's no catch to it. All right, now I'm coming in with my light So Saffron and I'm gonna color this leaf over here with the light So Saffron. So, and if you guys have questions about things, now is a great time um, to ask me questions too. Like if you're like, I don't know how to do this, just holler, just type them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. I'm always happy to answer questions about anything, pretty much. <laughs> My life is kind of an open book these days. So, all right, so there is a little yellow flower. And I think I'm actually going to do, or not flower, leaf. I think I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do this leaf in So Saffron as well. So I'm going to start by coloring it with the light So Saffron. 
And this nib is getting kind of icky too. Oh my, my Stampin' Blends are getting worn out. It must be that time, you keep, have to replace them. Stampin' Blends do not last forever. So if you are not gonna color a lot, I recommend just getting starting with a few colors. Colors that you're gonna use a lot and then use those. And then, you know, slowly add to your collection because you don't want to kind of get them all at once because uh, then they'll all die at the same time, which would be sad. So, yeah, they're just good to add. They're a good little addition. I got to get me some new ones. Wait till, you, wait till I pull out my, my uh, pumpkin pie one. And you see how bad that is. I found out this weekend. I was like, ooh, ooh boy, that definitely needs replacing. All right. There's my second so saffron leaf. And now we're gonna put those markers away. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the pumpkin pie. You guys can see how almost, like I hope I can color tonight. I hope I can get this one leaf colored. I'm gonna color this leaf up here in pumpkin pie, maybe. <laughs> so I'm starting with the light pumpkin pie again and I'm just coloring this with the light. Oh. And you can hear it, it sounds dry. So this is on my next order. My next order, I'm gonna be getting me some, some new pumpkin pie blends. But gotta wait for them to get here. All right, so there's some light pumpkin pie on there. And now I'm gonna add some dark pumpkin pie. Lisa, you're just watching tonight? All right. Sounds good, all right. So there is some dark pumpkin pie. Just kind of went over the veins and things on the leaf. I'm gonna come in and add, kind of blend out the edges and stuff with my light, my light pumpkin pie, if I can. All right, there's our orange leaf. So I'm gonna put those away. I'm gonna grab, um, let me see, I'm gonna grab my crumb cake. You like the color choices? Ah, oh, me too, I love the, I love the fall colors. I'm gonna grab my crumb cake. Let's start with the light crumb cake on the insides of my, the centers to my flowers. And then we'll do some dark crumb cake on those little like circles, I don't, I don't know what kind of flowers these are. I'm not a gardener. Maybe you guys have an idea what kind of flowers these are and why they have little circles next to them. I have no idea what color they're supposed to be. I'm coloring them dark crumb cake. Um, you're, you are welcome to do whatever you want. So there's the dark. A starter kit of markers. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, so what I recommend for which Stampin' Blends, I'm assuming you're talking about the Stampin' Blends markers and not the Stampin' Write markers. Um, for the Stampin' Blends markers, what I recommend is I recommend, um, first of all, looking at the stamp set. Oops, I don't wanna put those away yet. Let's do the bottoms of our acorns too. So we'll start with the light again. So look at the stamp sets that you wanna use them on, okay? And see what you need to color, first of all. That would be you know, the first thing to do. Now, nine times out of 10, <laughs> nine times out of 10, it's probably flowers, right? Um, and so if what you're trying to color is flowers, I always recommend getting like a green and a yellow and a red or a pink and then the crumb cake. <laughs> I use the crumb cake pretty much constantly. So that's kind of my recommendation is a green and a yellow and a red or a pink and then the crumb cake. And it's really up to you which shades, you know, if you're are a person who likes soft colors, then you might wanna go with one of the subtles. If you like more bright colors, then you might wanna go with bright colors. It's a personal choice. Oh yeah, you're liking the, the colored pencils. Oh, I like the colored pencils too. All right, so I pulled out my um, soft suede blends and I'm coloring the tops of my acorns with the soft suede. And just add that in there. And then I'm gonna come in with the dark soft suede and I'm gonna use the bullet tip and I'm just coloring along the bottoms of like the bumps 
on the acorn tops, just trying to bring out that bumpiness. And I'm not doing a very good job. I'm not like doing them individually. I'm just kind of, you know, going over it. So, because once we put the more um, of the light soft suede on here, it's gonna, it's gonna kind of like, what do I wanna say? It's gonna use up some of that color. And I'm just pulling some of that brown into the leaves, right? All right. But yes, I love the color pencils with the blender pens. Like that is old school. We've had, we have had the uh, color pencils forever, like ages and ages. And uh, the blender pens. All right, I'm just adding some brown into the bottoms of those leaves. So there we go, there's our acorns. We're, we're coming along, slowly but surely. I'm gonna grab my Mossy Meadow Stampin' Blends. Now you might see me like reaching forward to get these. I keep all my Stampin' Blends in the Stampin' Storage. Um, and they're right like on a shelf at the other side of my desk, so. So I'm just coloring these leaves over here with the Mossy Meadow. And of course, once again, I'm starting with the light and then we'll add some dark to it. And these leaves are so small, I'm just doing a bunch of them. If you're coloring a really big area, you kind of want to color um, kind of one thing at a time. Like I did the flowers, I colored each flower um, one at a time and then shaded them, you know, shaded it and did everything. And before I moved on to the next flower. And you'll definitely want to do that um, because it's good not to let the blends dry too, too long before you start adding, adding the different shades. So, but these leaves are so small that just doing them all at once. So now I'm coming in with the dark mossy meadow and just adding some dark mossy meadow in here. So we're getting there slowly, but surely we're getting there. Now I find the dark mossy meadow to be very dark. I actually don't use this color very often, um, but I'm gonna use, we're gonna use uh, mint macaron on the other, the other leaves. And I find that this, the mossy meadow seem to work better with them than like the old olive. And usually I use old olive. I probably use old olive for my green quite often, old olive and granny apple green, so. All right, I'm gonna do these ones over here with this dark too. So I'm gonna start with the dark. Um, the, okay, are you talking about the blender pens or the Stampin' Blends? Actually, I mean, it's the same. Any marker that you have, um, a, any marker that has two tips to it, you definitely wanna store them on their side um, so that the ink stays distributed between the two tips. If you have a marker that's just one tip, then you can store it um, towards that tip, right? On its end towards that tip. But if they have two tips, you want to store them on their side. And for my blender pens, so I have my Stampin' Blends in my Stampin' Storage here. And I just kind of keep my blender pens in one of the holes too. So I have a couple that are just there. So I can pull them out whenever I want them. All right, so adding that dark mossy meadow in there. And then going over it a little bit more with the light. We're nearly done. All right, now I'm gonna grab my mint macaron. Oh no, no. I don't know why my phone has been doing this. Hold on. Let me see what is going on. My browser has lost connection with the phone. All right. I'm not sure why my browser, browser has lost connection with the phone. I think somebody might have tried to call me. That might have done it. So let me see if I can.
and now I just realized you can't hear me either. <laughs> so uh, I, once I took that phone out of there, I realized you couldn't hear me either. So here I am. I am talking. Um, I'm going to come back in. Hold on. All right. So. Now you should have audio. Yes? Whew. <laughs> Got to push all the right buttons in the right spot. So hopefully you can hear me now. I think somebody tried to call me on my phone, and that's why I couldn't. Uh, it, lost, it lost connection. So let me know if you can hear me now. I'm coming back in with my mint macaron. And I'm starting with the light. And I'm going to color these leaves right here with the light mint macaron. And I'll come back in with the dark and add a little bit of dark. I really wanted some soft sea foam for these, but I do not have the soft sea foam Stampin' Blend. So I went with mint macaron. All right, we'll color these ones over here too. Whew. This, this card, this is the only card where we did this much coloring. Um, the, the other cards do not, the other cards do not have this much coloring on them. Like I said, this one will probably take us the longest. So, all right, there's our mint macaron leaves. And now I'm gonna grab my real red Stampin' Blends. And I'm gonna start by coloring with the light real red on my berries. I'll just color these. And come back in with the dark. And add just some dark on the bottom. I think I might have used cherry cobbler on the ones on my sample card. I don't know. Yeah, you know, sometimes I don't remember what colors I use. It doesn't really matter. Oops. That's the dark. I wanted the light. It's okay. So you can always, you know, any of these classes, you can substitute colors, right? You can really, you know, pick and choose what works for you. All right. So there are those. And then I'm going to come over here, do these. Very quick and easy. Right. There we go. And then this. Now, one last thing I want to do. I should have done it earlier. I'm going to grab my light. Eh, I'm going to grab my dark so saffron. And I'm just going to color over these lines just to kind of give them a little bit of something. So very quickly. And there we go, there is our coloring. Whew. That was a lot of coloring. Hopefully y'all hopefully kept up with me, so there we go. There's our beautiful colored, our beautiful colored piece. And we're just gonna go ahead and adhere this right to our card front. With just some multi-purpose glue. Thank you, Jude. It's nice sometimes to color it. It's kind of relaxing. All right. There we go. Now I want to take this little piece of very vanilla and I am going to stamp on here Autumn Wishes. And I'm going to use, um, you know what, on the, on the sample I used 
soft suede, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the early espresso again. Since that's what I ended up stamping my flowers in this time. But again, you could use any color you want. So there's the autumn wishes. Now in your little bag of treats, you have a piece of twine. And the, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come into this twine and we are going to pull it apart. So just start kind of at the end and start pulling it apart. And then just grab on to one piece, one piece of the twine and pull it out. And you just kind of kind of work it down. And then we wanna try to get some of that silver, some of the silver thread and another piece of twine. And it's kind of easier to get those together usually. So I just have the silver thread and another piece of that twine, and now I'm gonna pull those out. And just slide it, you kinda of gotta slide it down. And pull it right out, so there we go. Woo, so pretty. You can set the big thick one aside, and then pick up the silver thread and two of those two pieces, and we're gonna tie this in a bow. Now, why am I not using the linen thread? Would be my question to myself. <laughs> um, the reason that I don't use the linen thread for this, well, I mean, I could use the linen thread, but the reason I chose to use the twine instead is the twine just has this really nice rustic look to it, right? It's kind of fuzzy on the ends, it's twine. So, and then you do get that silver in there too, which is pretty. So I'm gonna just tie that, tie that in a bow like that. I am gonna go ahead and just kind of pull on one of the threads of the twine on both sides. This just makes one loop a little bit smaller than the other and that kind of helps them spread out a little bit too, right? Cause we want like a nice, a nice bow that's gonna show up on our card. This is gonna go somewhere in this region right here. So I'm just gonna take, I want, my, I want my sentiment to come down here. So I'm kind of just playing with this and seeing how I want it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oops, doesn't work if I pick it up. So just see where it is. And I'm like, okay, I know I wanna put the center of it just about right there. So I'm gonna grab my Stampin', my mini, mini glue dots, and we'll just push the center of the bow onto the mini glue dot and pull it off. And then that goes right on our card. All right. And I'm gonna check, check my sentiment again. Yep, oh, that's perfect. So then we're gonna grab some dimensionals because everything needs dimensionals, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just put a dimensional right there. So I know the corner is gonna go right there. And then I'm gonna come in and put a couple more down here. I'm just gonna try it out, make sure that it is well. You know what, that ended up too high. I like to put it on there because then I make sure it's on the other side of the bow. Um, but sometimes you get it in the wrong spot. All right, so there we go. We'll pull off those backs. And we can just add this to our card front. Just like that. And then the only thing we have left to do is to grab a pair of scissors and just trim up the edges. Now I do like to get the edges. Um, I don't just cut one straight across because I kind of like them to be a little bit um, uneven. So I just kind of cut them individually and that makes them just a little bit uneven. Oh, I forgot one thing. We're also gonna grab some rustic metallic dots. These are in your packet as well. You got about a half pack of these, so you can use as many as you want. I'm gonna use three. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool and I'm gonna pull off one of the big ones. I'm gonna put that under here. And then I'm gonna grab a small one and put it there and grab another small one, I think, or a big one and put it up here. So just three little metallic dots on there, the rustic metallic dots. And there is our first card. How's everybody doing with their cards? 
Did you get through all that coloring? Isn't that fun? Oh, I really like that card. It's just, it was a lot of coloring to do, but it's just so pretty to look at. So hopefully y'all like it too. Whew. I'm going to take just a minute. I'm going to clean up my stamps. Give you guys a couple extra seconds to, uh, to get done. I'm just going to clean off my stamps on my chamois. So I just have my chamois. A lot of people ask me this. How do I clean my stamps? I have my chamois. It is wet. It is very dirty and old. And I just have it wet with water. And then I wipe my stamps on it. And sometimes I'll take it and I kind of double it up and really push that stamp into it. And that helps get, um, get the water, get it all the way up there. So, Jerry Ann, you're just watching tonight. Perfectly understandable. All right, let's pull out card number two. So, envelope number two in here. Let's look and see what we got. So, you should have a little banner strip. And then a piece of basic white, a piece of the striped. This is the Celebrate Everything designer series paper. This is the host paper pack that's in the mini catalog and I love it. And then you have a piece of So Saffron, a small piece of crushed curry, a checked piece of that same Celebrate Everything. It's got stars on the back. This one has pumpkins on the back. And then another smaller striped piece. And then you have the base of your card. Now I already, I went ahead and folded your card for you. So you've already have your card folded how it's gonna be. We're gonna go ahead and unfold it. And we're gonna start just by doing some gluing again, just to get some, get some pieces out of our way. So I'm gonna start with the basic white. This small piece of basic white. And I'm just gonna adhere this on that back panel, the last panel. And then I wanna take the skinny piece of striped. Okay, so this is the skinny one. There's two stripes, one is bigger. This is the smaller one. And I'm gonna adhere the smaller one all the way to the right edge of this piece of white. Okay, so it's going all the way over here to the right. And that way, when we close our card, we're just gonna see that stripe. And then I wanna grab the bigger piece of stripe and it's gonna go on the center panel, okay? So that one just gets right here in the center. More stripes. There we go. And then we're gonna set this aside because we can't glue the next piece on yet. I am gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna glue stuff out here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this other piece of the Celebrate Everything designer series paper. The plaid one is going to go on the small strip of crushed curry. And why are those not the same length? That is a very good question. Because I cut the crushed curry too long. So hopefully your crushed curry is not long, too long. The crushed curry should be four and a quarter, not four and a half. And let me see. I wrote it wrong on my piece of paper. So they're probably all cut wrong. We'll have to come in and just trim off a little bit of one end there. I'm gonna let it dry first though. So I have my piece of So Saffron and it is gonna go on here, okay, on the front. But first I wanna grab the flower stamp and I wanna grab some crushed curry ink and I'm going to stamp those flowers on the so saffron. And I'm just kind of rotating my stamp around. So it's going different directions. I don't want them too, too close together. So just kind of like that, just some, just some flowers on there. Oh, okay, Cindy, have a good night evening. We will hopefully see you next time. And then I'm gonna clean off my little flower. And in your little bag, your little envelope of extra things, you have a piece of white. I'm gonna pull that out. And I wanna grab my 
Tuxedo Black Memento. And I'm going to stamp three flowers. One, two, and three. And we are going to color these. I'm going to start with the dark. I'm going to start with the dark so saffron, I think, is what I did on these. I tell you, I don't remember always. I think I did the dark so saffron and the light daffodil delight. So we'll just color the first one with the light or the dark so saffron. And then I'm going to come in with the light daffodil delight and add a little bit extra. You know what? I think I used the dark daffodil because that's not showing up. So let's grab the dark daffodil. And we'll just add some of that. There we go. Just over those lines that are already in the stamp. And just add those in and then we can go back over with the dark so saffron again. Just blend that out a little bit. And we'll go and do the next one. Coloring with that dark so saffron again. My so saffron is getting sad too. And then come back in with the dark daffodil. Now, if you don't have the daffodil, you could use the light and the dark so saffron. That would work as well. And then I'll come back in with the light or with the dark so saffron. I keep saying the wrong thing. The dark so saffron and just go over it again and then we'll do the third flower. These three flowers are the only thing we're coloring on this one. So not tons of coloring on this card. And then coming in with the dark daffodil and adding a little bit extra. And then coming back with that dark so saffron again. And I'm not even coloring the whole, like all the way to the edges, because I like just a little bit of white showing. It's kind of, it's kind of nice on there. For this one, I'm gonna use the old olive. So I told you, normally I use old olive almost always for my leaves or the granny apple green, but I'm gonna use old olive, starting with the light old olive. Now, whether you start with the light or the dark when you're doing Stampin' Blends, it's really up to you. You can do whatever you want. I'm coming in with the dark and just doing it towards the edges, towards the where the flower is. And on the vein, on the center of the leaf as well. So next month for the October card class, we are going to use the Big Hooray stamp set. And I'm really excited about that. It's just a big sentiment stamp. So I'm kind of excited to see what I come up with it. Um, you like the one color focus? It is kind of nice. It's kind of a mono, almost a monotone, not quite. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna use the Big Hooray stamp set for the October card class. And that's gonna be October 25th. Um, but you have to register for that. The registration ends next week, uh, Friday. So registration is open over on my website. I also put the link, if you're on YouTube, the link is in the description to this video as well. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab my crumb cake as well on this one. I always make the center's crumb cake. And we'll just add that to the centers. And then I'm gonna come in with the dark crumb cake. and do kind of those outsides in the center. And I'm like, I'm not going, I'm not worrying about getting, you know, directly into all those little circles. I'm just very quickly coloring over them. And then adding a little bit more of the light to blend it out. And there's my flowers. Now, if you have the autumn bouquet dies, you can go ahead and you can cut out these flowers with the dies. But I like to do my monthly card classes 
without the dies so that anybody can do them. Um, so I'm just gonna fussy cut these. They're pretty easy. All right, just cut around those flowers. The dies are really nice, but sometimes, you know, you don't always want the dies for everything or, you know, not everybody, if you're just starting out, you may not have a die cutting machine and that's perfectly understandable. So I like to try to just, you know, these classes really just focus on using the stamps and any die cutting is already done for you. So there's one flower. I'll come in and do the next one. <clears throat> and when I cut, you know, I mostly use turning the paper as I go and I'm just leaving a little bit of a border. And I'm really going pretty quick at this tonight. Sometimes when I fussy cut, I take a little bit more time, kind of go slow, but just, you know, zipping through this this evening. So there's my second one. And then here comes my third. And then you can just set aside that piece of white. We'll need it to stamp one more thing on the next card. So just cutting around those. Whoops, got a little bit closer than I wanted, but that's okay. There we go, there's my three flowers. And let me show you how we're gonna stamp this banner. So here's your banner. Now I did die cut it first for you. So we're going to have to try to line up our banner. And the banner does have a certain direction to it. I think I have it right this time. But if you put it on there, you will notice um, that it does line up one direction better than the other. So definitely check it before you ink up your stamp. And I'm going to stamp this with some crushed curry. This just gives a nice outline to the banner. Now, if you don't wanna put this on because you're afraid you're gonna mess up, that's okay, you don't have to. You can also stamp this on your piece of scrap white and just cut it out. That's gonna be really easy to cut as well. So there's our little banner. And I'm gonna grab my old, ink, my old olive ink pad to get ready. And I want the stamp that says, just a note. Now, the just a note stamp, I'll show you, it is straight. The nice thing about the photopolymer stamps is you can kind of bend them. And I just kind of want to bend this on here. So, well, what am I doing? I gotta think about this for a second. <laughs> Cause it's kind of hard to hold it bent into the right position. So I think, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm I'm going to try this. I'm putting this upside down underneath here. And then I'm bending my stamp to kind of match that and giving it a good stick down. Let's see if we got it. There. That's good. So that will go right there on the right side of that banner. So if you saw that, I took it and I turned it over and I set my block on it and then I put down my stamp kind of turned around that curve and you got to push it down and make sure it stays put. So you curved the stamp and then turn that back over, grab your old olive and we're going to stamp this right towards this right side. So it says just a note. And then you put that old olive away. Now I do need to come in here and just trim off a quarter inch. So this should be four and a quarter and not four and a half. So I'll just trim this off with my paper trimmer. And now I'm gonna do a little trick on this banner. I'm gonna take my mini dimensionals and I'm gonna put a couple of mini dimensionals over here on the right side, okay? So they're gonna be under that just a note. And then on the left side, I'm gonna put some multi-purpose glue. 
I just kind of want to give this the look that it's, you know, in motion, right? Pull off the backs of my dimensionals. And then this just goes on this little banner, on this little strip here. And I'm gonna adhere our So Saffron piece to the front of our card. Let me know how you guys are doing. Am I going too fast? Hopefully not. Just add some multi-purpose glue to the back of there. And this goes on the front of my card. And then I'm gonna start kind of just laying this out just to see what it's gonna look like. Because I wanna come up here and I'm gonna put one of these flowers here and I'm gonna put one kind of down here and then I'm gonna put one over here. So I kinda wanna see where do I wanna put them? I don't really like it that far direction. All right, it's still gonna go this way. That's why I always check it. I was like, which way do I want it to go? Okay, I'm gonna put it up there like that. And then I'm just gonna take this off so I kinda know where it's going. And we'll just adhere this with just a little bit of green glue. Now the nice thing about the green glue is now I can come in with this here and I'm gonna make sure I don't put it over here. So I just flip it upside down and then put the adhesive on one side. And then this comes in here like this. Now with that green glue, I can still kind of move this little flower. So if I wanna change its angle just a little bit or I wanna push it up or down, you have some wiggle room. There's that. I'm gonna add the second flower with just a little bit of green glue as well. We'll put it down here. And then I'm gonna use a Stampin' Dimensional on the third one. So I'm just popping a Stampin' Dimensional in the center of that. And then this flower is gonna go up here. There's my three flowers. And we're gonna add some rustic metallic, metallic dots on here as well. If I can find my take your pick tool. So I'm using the putty end and I just stick it on and then kind of push those dots to the side and that kind of releases them. Makes it easy to pick them up. So we'll put a big one and then two small ones. And that is our fun fold card for tonight. Isn't that kind of fun? At, you know, the yellow is a yellow that is good for fall, but that could also be a spring card. So next spring, you're still gonna be able to use this stamp set. You can color the leaves green um, and it can be a summer set too. I just, I think it's fabulous. I think it's an all year, all year stamp set. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my stamps. You guys can tell me how you're doing. Tell me if you're keeping up or if I'm going too fast and I need to slow down. Or if you're tired. <laughs> so. We've already been at it for a while tonight. So the next class card though, I think you're gonna really like um, it's super simple, super simple. We're gonna do an easy card. Oh, and I'm so glad that you like them all so far, or both of them, there's only been two. All right, card number three. Go ahead and pull out the insides of this. You have in here, you have one of these open leaf trinkets, a piece of white, a piece of soft suede, a piece of crumb cake, another little banner, and then your crumb cake base. You made the first one with me, awesome. I'm gonna start by grabbing the smaller piece of crumb cake, and I'm gonna have the white sitting here too, because I think I'm gonna use that as well. 
And I'm going to use some early espresso ink. And I want to grab this great big stamp, but don't worry, I promised you we were not going to color it again. We're just going to stamp it. So I'm going to take this big, big stamp and stamp it with some early espresso. And I'm just going to stamp it up here in the upper left corner. And I'm going to ink it up again. And I'm going to stamp it down here in the lower right corner. And I'm kind of just getting the fall bits of it, right? I'm getting the acorns mostly. So there we go. And then, you know what? Well, I got this out. I forgot I wanted to do this. I'm gonna grab the white for the inside, which I have not gotten a big smudge on. So I'll just turn that over. I'm gonna ink it up again. And I'm just gonna stamp that again in the corner for the inside of the card. And if you want to, you could grab your envelope Let's stamp the envelope too, shall we? We can grab the envelope, ink it up, and then I'll stamp that on the flap. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. And how about the front of the card too? How about down here? So there you go. Now your envelope is pretty too. Everything matches. <laughs> All right, grab your uh, basic white, that piece of scrap that you used on the last card, and grab your little um, your little acorn. And we're just gonna stamp one of these little acorns. And while we have the early espresso out, go ahead and grab that banner. And we're gonna use the stamp that says, um, sending many thanks, right? Sending many thanks. We're gonna ink that up with the early espresso as well. And again, you might want to check it. I should have checked it before I did this because this stamp does have a certain direction too that it is going to fit better on the banner. So there's the sending many thanks. While I'm working on that banner, I'm going to go ahead and grab my crumb cake ink pad and I'm going to grab the outside of the banner. Oh, good night, Jude. Thanks for stopping by. So, and I didn't check this again, but I think I got it right. All right. Definitely check this before you do it, which I didn't do. And I'm just going to stamp that on that banner. Oops, I missed a little bit, but that's okay. So there's our little banner. Let's set this aside. Let's grab that little acorn. Okay. I'm going to grab my crumb cake. Stampin' Blends to start with. I'm gonna color the bottom with the light crumb cake. And add a little bit of the dark crumb cake on those little cheater lines again. Go back over part of it with the, with the light. And then let's grab the Soft Suede Stampin' Blends. And I'm going to start with the light and just color in that whole little acorn top with the light. And then use the dark and go over the bottom of those little bumps again. I don't know if those little bumps have a name. <laughs> I don't know. The tops on your acorn, the bumps on the tops of the acorns. Do those have a name? I don't know. I'm glad that I do not have acorns in my yard, though. I have enough crazy uh the tree things hi kimberly so glad you could make it for the end so there is our little acorn and i'm gonna grab my scissors my paper snips and i'm just gonna cut out this little acorn and again if you have the the uh, bo autumn bouquet dies. There is a die to cut this little acorn out. But if you don't have it, it's really easy just to use your paper snips and just cut it out with your paper snips. So, cutting around that little acorn, and now we're ready to start putting things together. All right. 
So I'm gonna grab that piece of crumb cake that we already stamped. Now on your desk, remember that piece of twine? Oh, that's not even the same one. I have so many partially used pieces of twine. <laughs> oh yes, Kimberly, I shared your card that you sent me at the beginning. It was gorgeous, so I had to show everybody. I'm sad you weren't here to, here to see that. All right, so here is the twine that we started pulling apart, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull two more pieces out of this. So there's one, and there is two. And I just, then I end up keeping these on my desk and I use them on other cards later. So there's my two pieces. I hope I sent you enough. You know what I might've done? Cause there's not enough to tie this in a bow. You know what I did? You know what I did? We're gonna take this and we're just gonna wrap this to the back and hopefully you have a little piece of tape. We'll just tape that on the back and then snip the ends. I forgot I did this. And then grab your little piece of twine again and you should have a couple pieces, a couple strands left in there. You want two of them, right? And we're gonna thread this through here. And I'm gonna tie it in a knot. And then I'm gonna find that little, our little trinket. Okay, our little trinket. And I'm gonna thread this through. Put this on here, I hope. Let's do it on this small one. It doesn't have to be on both. My twines are all twisted up. We'll just untwist those. There we go. So we just slide that on. And then we're going to tie this in a bow. I haven't really used these trinkets, but they worked really well on this card. All right, and we'll pull this down. And pull our ends. There we go. So we have a little bow. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was so nice you just sent that card. That was so sweet. I love getting, you know, I mean, I like birthday cards. Birthday cards are nice. But I tell you, unexpected cards in the mail are the best. Definitely recommend sending unexpected cards to people because there's nothing like just getting getting a little card. Like, oh, look, somebody thought of me out of the blue for no reason, right? It's always a surprise. I like surprises. I am a surprise person. How about you? Are you guys into surprises or are you like you don't like surprises? <laughs> you want to know what's coming. I'm just putting some little mini Stampin' Dimensionals on my little flag here. I'm gonna pop those backs off. And I left a big space here to go over the knot. And then this just goes on here, just like that. We can trim up the ends a little bit. And then don't forget about your little acorn. Thanks, Kimberly. Don't forget about that little acorn. We're gonna go ahead and grab that acorn. Let me see if I can fit a full-sized dimensional on there. Oh, I can. So we're just gonna pop a little dimensional on there. And then we're gonna put this little acorn like in here and just slide its little top through there. So it almost looks like it is tied on that bow as well. So. So he just goes poof in here, stick them in there. There we go. Isn't that fun? And now we just got to put our card together. So this is going to go on our soft suede. And I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to put this on the soft suede. So pop those on there. My sister is probably going to tell me I'm using way too many dimensionals. <laughs> I'm just going to use my take your pick tool and pop those off the back. If you're trying this for the first time, you really got to stab 
you got to stab and lift and you got to give it a good stab. So, all right. And this just goes on the soft suede. I'm wanting to say so saffron. They start with the same S's. So that goes on the soft suede. And then we're going to adhere this to the crumb cake. Some of that adhesive on there. Make sure I'm getting this the right direction. So this just goes on the crumb cake front for a very monochromatic, easy fall card. And we'll put the inside inside. Now you could color this if you wanted, but I think I like just the, the brown and white. Kind of has a elegant look to it. So this one just goes right here on the inside. And there is our third card. Super easy. See, we start hard and then we get easier as we go. <laughs> That's what I do with my students too. It's like, let's start with the hard stuff and then we'll get easy at the end of class because you're going to get tired. <laughs> All right. So there is that thank you card. And then our fun fold, just a note card. And then our autumn wishes card that we started with when we did all that coloring way back at the beginning. So hopefully you like all of those cards. <sighs> Thank you for sticking with me for tonight's uh, card class. I'm so glad you guys came. It has been fun. Whew, that was a lot of work, wasn't it? Yep. Um, it has been a lot of fun though this evening. I'm glad that you guys have been here. And don't forget the next card class, we'll be using the Big Hooray stamp set. And I can't I can't wait to do that. I'm excited to put those cards together. Registration is open. You can register over on uh, my website. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Kimberly, yes, definitely watch the replay. There's lots in there. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, everyone, so much. I'm glad that you guys were here, and I'm glad that you enjoyed these cards. I will see you guys again on Thursday. And actually, you know what? I think on Thursday, I'm going to use the Big Hooray stamp set because um, if you have been watching me on Instagram, I asked, I gave a poll asking people what stamps they wanted me to use. It was a tie. <laughs> so, uh, but big, big hooray was one of the top three. Um, well, it was tied for one with two other stamp sets. So I'm going to use that on Thursday. Um, and then we'll get to the other ones in the next couple weeks. So I hope to see you again on Thursday night at 8 PM. Have a fabulous evening. And, uh, if you are in Florida or the East coast, make sure you take care.